XRP, the calm before the storm, the ultimate last chance to get in before we see a massive price move. Are some of the questions lots of people have been asking, and in this video, we're going to kind of break down exactly what I think is going on with XRP, why Brad Garlinghouse and Stuart Alderity ultimately were at the district courthouse in New York, and more in terms of what's coming with XRP. If we take a look at the overall cryptocurrency market right now, we're sitting around a $2.68 trillion market cap with a 1.84% move on the day. And XRP still sitting around 62.83. Now, a number of people will still say, why do you continue to talk about XRP? Why are you still invested? Is this really something that is going to make a significant gain? And I stand by my conviction in the sentiment that I believe XRP will win the court case and I believe XRP will then set a different standard when it comes to the financial infrastructure that uses cryptocurrency. In some of the partnerships they had, whether that be Uphold, Metico, even linking back into HSBC and Banks of Hong Kong, is really important as to how they derive their ledger and ultimately therefore work into the financial sector. Now, XRP generally does trade down at a weekend. $755 million is the volume, but a market cap still sitting around $34.4 billion. So what do we want to talk about specifically? Well, a lot of people are ultimately getting excited about what could happen. And we've got a number of reasons why. Not only do we have the Securities and Exchange Commission settlement conference, in which we're still waiting for some of this documentation to come out. What's important to reference here, though, is back to file number 942. Now, you might be wondering what that is. And this is the interesting point here with 947 and equally 942. It says here, that the selected parties proposed judgment document filed by the Securities and Exchange Commission, Brad Garlinghouse, Christian Larson, Ripple Labs, motion to order a file under seal 942. Well, seal under 942 is ultimately the granted seal to the motion of order by Judge Annalisa Torres. What does this all mean, I hear you ask? Well, the reality here is that it's the settlement judgment has ultimately been put in the seal aligned to this particular court document. Ultimately, when we see this come out, and this could be over the course of the next few days, then we'll get an idea of exactly what it is. Obviously, we do know that Brad Garlinghouse, Stuart Alderity were at the courthouse. And in my opinion, it was to discuss a proposed settlement, if proposed judgment, as you will, which ultimately for me is a financial number. And I talked about that in a previous video. Now, further on with that, we have had Stuart Alderity come out giving his view on the most recent Coinbase ruling, in which he says, Reread Wednesday's Coinbase ruling. Basically, the SEC sold the judge a bill of goods that she had to accept as true at this stage of the case. Now comes the hard part, producing evidence. My bet, the SEC is all hat and no cattle. Ultimately, what does he mean? The SEC already were found to be not truthful when it came to the debt box case, and that was quite widely renowned as a bit of a disaster for the SEC. Furthermore, Stuart Alderity given his view on the Coinbase settlement now, you've got to ask yourself, if you are in a court and you are potentially going to court, why would you therefore go to the SEC unless you had a trump card up your pocket? And I think that's exactly where Stuart Alderity sits. I think they're really clear in terms of what XRP is going to do. And I think they're also clear in terms of what the SEC has to give. And I don't think it's very much. We further have some very interesting information coming from David Schwartz. He's obviously the CTO over at Ripple discussing the XRPL and more importantly, the XRP's efficiency as a payment asset. Now, this is important because as soon as the court case is over, this will open up the doors for XRP to become part of the financial global infrastructure. And it says here that another point was whether XRP's efficiency as a payment asset hinges on its price. Schwartz affirmed that a higher price for the asset with a fixed supply like XRP enhances its practicality for payments and intermediation. He dismissed the notice that Ripple desires a lower XRP price for payment utility as nonsensical. What does this mean? Ultimately, the reality when you're using some of the banking systems, there is no point in them transferring huge or millions of coins for a specific value. Actually, the value of XRP needs to be much higher to allow for smaller coins, but ultimately more effective transfers cross-border. That's generally how banks like to work, and that's why you generally see banks you can dominate denominations of higher, cars, higher amounts of cash versus XRP. All of which, when you really think about what's going on under the skin, aligns to a specific agenda. Specific agenda, more importantly, being how do we integrate XRP into a financial global payment structure? And everything they seem to be doing is always aligned to that. And this is why people are excited about what's coming. Not only have we got the court case, which opens up a number of doors into this, we also have some very interesting price charting, giving us a view around some of the key price levels for XRP. 
the 66 cent range is a key point of resistance where we need to see a break above but a break above could lead us to the 74 highs that we saw very recently and then further on to that elusive one dollar that a lot of people want to talk about now when i look at my chart and fibonacci retrace this from the previous move what can we tell on the weekly chart well we are actually in a very nice upward trend it may not feel like it if you've been an xrp holder for quite some time but actually on the weekly chart this is a nice upward trend aligned to some of the key points on the fibonacci the 0.618 for example we retested that but look like we may get rejected on the weekly chart another point to note we got a nice cross here on the 50 day simple moving average and still holding on the yellow line which is the 200 exponential moving average all at the same time while having a MACD crush and RSI looking very bullish at the same time. So there's a lot of things right now that point to a potential big move for XRP. And equally, a lot of the experts are wading in to tell us that XRP is set for some big moves. Now, we're not going to get there tomorrow unless we see a significant step on in terms of the court case. We may even get an announcement very soon. If we were to get those announcements, that certainly would give us a definite uptrend when it comes to XRP aligned to some more of the technical charts that we see. What's my view? I can see us seeing an outcome very soon. I think the ducks are in order. And I think the fact that we're seeing Brad and Stuart over there in New York tells me they're working through a settlement. Even those court documents that we can't see, specifically detailing all the things around a judgment decision or proposal, all can be only aligned to one thing. And I think that is an XRP victory. However, there'll be a monetary aspect to it as well. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you think XRP were due in a settlement this week? Or do you think this is going to be dragged out to that May 6th deadline where we could end up in court? I'm always interested in all your thoughts. Don't forget, as always, if you enjoy this type of content, do subscribe to the channel. And also, if you could, just smash that like button. It really does help out and more than you will know. As ever, thank you so much for watching the video. I'm going to see you guys all in the next one. Bye-bye.